one of my main focuses in the 2022 year is to get rid of anything random and anything that's not systematic or strategic or anything that doesn't give me an exact step-by-step -step as to what to do or not do, when to get in, when to get out. There's an old saying uh, that um, you guys, I, I, I hate repeating cliches, things that are say, I said too much consistently, but some of them are so freaking true. Uh, one of these cliches is uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. One of my main focuses in the 2022 year is to get rid of anything random and anything that's not systematic or strategic or anything that doesn't give me an exact step-by-step -step as to what to do or not do, when to get in, when to get out. Uh, an example that I can give you is the analogy of the stock market. The stock market is something that you don't control. The, the entire establishment controls it. Who knows how manipulated it is? And um, the, the mass hysteria, because that's what it is, mass hysteria determines whether it goes up or down. That's what it is. People feel like the economy is good, things go up. People feel like the economy is crashing, things go down. And there's no logic behind it. In many, many cases, it's completely irrational. It's an unthinking machine. So when you are investing in the stock market, you need to have a plan because the emotional investor, like myself, Jorge knows really well, I have a story with the, I'm an emotional guy in general. I got out of the stock market because somebody that's emotional is going to guaranteed to be a complete and utter disaster in the stock market because of how emotionally driven it is. You cannot have your actions be directed by the way you feel about something. Like the intuition that I feel this strategy is going to work should not be a part of your equation. It should be based on a strategic plan. I've talked about strategies for a long time. We've covered the subject of strategies in the past. It's been told throughout ages also that when you, when you go back in history to battles that we've had, World War I, World War II, civil wars, et cetera, all of these wars can actually can be traced back to a strategy that won that war. So you got to have a plan of actions and think, a series of steps that are going to help you get it done. So for example, Laura, we talked about uh, setting up a contest. Well, that contest is a campaign and you need to set it up from the beginning as a plan of action and a plan of steps to get done in order to accomplish a specific goal. And what that plan does is that it's going to tell you if you're doing well or if you should pull the plug because it's not performing up to the standards that you expected. So for example, if you determine that a good cost per lead is $1.50, well, if your campaign starts getting leads at $4 or $2.5, you need to have a moment in which in this campaign, in the plan, is going to let you know when to pull the plug. And you take away the emotions from it. We got to have a plan for campaigns to generate sales. We got to have a plan for campaign to generate identities and prospects. We got to have a plan for branding. The other good thing about this, guys, and having a plan in place like this is that it's going to allow you to go back in time to determine what you did that exact date or holiday season to accomplish results. And you can go back and very simply be like, oh, my God, this is what we did. That's why we actually had great numbers or that's why we actually um, broke records this week or whatever the case may be. And you can always bring it back to life and have an organized system of campaign planning. So you know exactly when to get in and exactly when to get out in a particular campaign.